95.5 KLOS and 955KLOS.com. I'm Stu, and today we're in a new location. It's kind of my home away from home, uh, my studio, Studio M, which usually, you know, stands for madness or magic or, or something. But today it stands for Menachetti. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I can't tell you, I'm, I'm so excited to have this guy in, in my studio and, and as my guest today. One of the, if I can indulge just a little bit, I don't want to sure. embarrass you too much, but one of the most talented players to ever pick up a guitar a singer who defies the laws of human physics night after <laughs> night and the composer of what I feel is some of the greatest rock music made of any era. Dave Medichetti, you honor us with your presence. Thank, thank you. you. That, that was one heck of an intro, man, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, well, it's from the heart, I really... Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So you played the Canyon Club last night. You got yeah. a couple more gigs uh, in SoCal tonight. Right. Yeah. We have, we're playing Brixton tonight and... Um, Oh God! I always, the galaxy. always forget the name of that place. I don't know why. Because the Galaxy it Theater. Every couple of years. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, changes ownership and then back again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's actually a really cool place too. I, I've always liked playing that. Yeah. Both of those places are great. Yeah, they are good places, and they're good. they're going to be packed. I'm pretty sure. Um, uh, I've been looking forward to this interview for uh, uh, when I found out. You know, I couldn't believe it. Really awesome. Right. Uh, you know, years and then and then weeks and and then it kind of occurred to me. Uh, as we get, you know, as I was thinking about, you know, where are we going to go with this? That really, the only place that you can, you know, start right now is is with Phil. Right. Right. Um, Understood. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it hasn't even been three months uh, since its passing, and right. you guys have been. Ha you were touring. You're still touring. Right. And uh, I, it, it's got to just be so intense for you. You're it already is. an emotional player. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you know, and and. Um, it's been, I don't know how to describe it except to say that the last eight months have been um, the weirdest, strangest trip for me, you know. Uh, I mean, Phil and I were best buddies, and, and we were the best buddies in the band probably from the very beginning. You know, somehow or another, it, it always just turned out that way. As soon as the band started, he and I were the guys that hung out the most together. And, uh, you know, we were emotionally tied. We were tied by the music. We were tied by all of our you know, different things that we shared in common, uh, just, you know, our loves and likes and dislikes and so on and so forth. I mean, even politically, everything, you know, in fact, our typical rehearsal was, uh, you know, we say rehearsal for one, guys show up around two. <laughs> we talk till about five, and then we start practicing. Sounds like a rock band. <laughs> exactly. Like, That's awesome. You know? yeah, we had lots of stuff to talk about, and Phil was a great talker, man. Oh, my God, it was amazing. You called him really, you know, uh, uh, your, your words were really articulate, uh, that, that he was an articulate guy. Uh, he, was. he was really good at, uh, you know, putting into words in clever turns of phrase, things that yes. people just couldn't find yeah. within themselves. He was a master at that. I mean, I could come up with some good lyrics and stuff, and, and, and put them down on paper, and then he would maybe say something in another song that was similar, and he would just have the trick of the of the right phrasing and the, and and a great way of saying it or something that you'd just be like, oh man, I would have never thought of that. I mean, he just he had he had the master talent of being able to be a really good lyricist. I never realized before I really you know made it my business to to kind of dig a little bit like uh, that, that Phil really wrote a lot of those lyrics. I he did. did not yeah. realize yeah. that. Yeah. You know and a lot of them were uh, based out of his own experiences like Barroom Boogie and such. <laughs> uh, <a> classic. <laughs> exactly. And clearly a Phil song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean. Absolutely a Phil song. You know I mean we have a song on the new record called Gonna Go Blind you know and I'm sure you can figure out what that's about you know and uh, he's had a lot of experience as we all have uh, that one but uh, you know and but it's all the way that he says it you know I mean you can you can just say something very crude or you can say it in a way that makes you smile or laugh you yes know? Yeah. and yeah. that's the artistry yeah. of, of lyric writing it right. sometimes seems lost on yeah on exactly people. exactly but uh, you know I mean we we obviously very much miss him you know yeah. personally and professionally and uh, you know I was telling some fans last night that you know you know we he he comes into my mind, you know, at the oddest points and in, in, even in the point of the shows, you know. I mean, I'll, I'll be in the middle of playing a song and all of a sudden I'll think about him, you know. And, uh, and, I, and I take that as a positive thing and I let that feeling of him sort of come through my playing, through my singing, whatever, at that particular moment. Um, because I think that that's, you know, I have to think of, the, of him as all the positive stuff that he's meant in my life and as the career that we've had in Y&T. 
and that just sort of transcends through the music, I think. And, sure, and, it's a, and it does with all of us that have, that have been close to him for the years. It's, life goes on, and, and you have a band that has had this much time to, to spit out so many different records over the years in different iterations. I mean, you know, we had, you know, Leonard and Joey Leonard and, and, and Joey myself Show, and Phil, and of course, Steph and, and then there were Steph and Jimmy, Jimmy and, and, and now there's Mike and John. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been good in all of the the ways that the band has been and i think that that's something that the fans really get behind and and even the former members i mean even leonard just recently posted on his his site he said you know what man he goes i don't like this fact where every once in a while a fan will come up and go oh man the, this this version of the band was better and this band's been better or so on so he goes man they're all great he goes, the band that is happening right now have got amazing players. They're fantastic. They're at the top of their peak. He goes, but every version of the band was great. And, you know, I think that was great of him to say that, too. You it know? is. And, yeah. uh, you know, Y&T is one of those, I think, kind of rare uh, situations where you don't have, or at least I've never read, any negative, you know, barbs or backbiting between any right. of the ex-members. Like, no, everyone's do cool. We don't do that. Everyone's always, like, Well, first of all, we're, a lot we were friends first. Yeah. You know, and... You know, when you have to make those tough decisions of, of, you know, letting somebody go, it's never easy. And it's nothing that, that any of us wanted to do, you know, mm -hmm. from, a, from a personal standpoint. But, you know, from a, from a professional standpoint, a business standpoint, whatever it was, uh, we had to do it and so on and so forth. And we knew that, of course, people were going to have hurt feelings and it wasn't going to be you know, all milk toast and everything like that. <laughs> but, you know, for the bottom, but, Kumbaya. but the bottom line is, is that I would personally never never talk bad about anybody in this band never no matter even if there were reasons why we had to let them go that we were you know we're frustrating and personal or whatever you know it, it's just not my style of doing things and and why would I want to drag somebody down you know I mean these are guys that I've spent you know amazing years with in a career that we've had fantastic experiences I love them all dearly I really do and uh, and, and I don't have anything bad to say about them certainly not in public you know I mean that's that's not the place for it and 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 I'm glad that they felt the same you know Y&T uh, uh, is said to have begun in 74 but actually you guys are playing together as early as 72 and That's I right. read something that suggested that you actually auditioned to get in with uh, with Leonard yeah yeah I did because uh, Leonard and I had just had this sort of you know acquaintance kind of level thing where you know in in East Oakland, where we were from, we would go to the parties, you know, you know, hey, we heard about some party up in the Ho Oakland Hills or something like that. Yeah, yeah. there's going to be like a band there jamming, yeah, you know. <laughs> so, you know, it was always the thought, well, maybe, you know, I, I might be able to jam with them or, or just, if nothing else, let's just see who's, who's up here and who's the good players. Right. And so it was that kind of thing where, you know, you ended up meeting or hearing about all the other guys that so everybody else was talking about saying, man, these are the hot players. Man, you should check out this drummer, Leonard Hayes, you know, and so on and so forth. And I guess Leonard had heard something about, oh, man, there's this guitar player, Dave. So eventually we would meet at like a party and, you know, there would be this little interaction about, yeah, I heard you were good. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to jam one of these days. See and, if you really yeah, can yeah, stack exactly, up. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Right. And uh, I go, yeah, whatever. So, uh, of course, that happened. And, um, you know, and we, we really got off on each other's playing and everything. And, you know, a couple of months went by and Leonard gave me a call and said, hey, our guitar player is moving. He's going out and, you know, going to India or something like that, you know. Hmm. We want to see, you know, if you're interested and come on down and we want to audition you. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, it was, it was real simple. It was an easy thing. It came down, jammed, and it was a done deal, you know. And, it, they didn't, and, didn't and return I, any more calls after that. No, no, it was, it was, <laughs> it was fine. But, uh, you know, and it was, it was cool. We were just doing cover tunes at that point. Yeah, what were those early days like? Yeah, it was great, man. I mean, we were doing cover tunes playing you know basically our biggest gigs were playing navy bases quite frankly oh, yeah. that was the cool place to play because you could you could play maybe three or four different navy bases in the bay area and uh and get a pretty consistent gig out of it you know and it paid okay money and the cool thing was is that you're talking about guys that are in the service and do you think these guys like rock and roll? Of course they do. Yeah, yeah. You know, and everybody wants to kill. Hey, my hair used to be down to here. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> my I hair it. used to be up to here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's getting longer. And, uh, you know, but it was cool. So we could play 
the the cover tunes that we wanted to play. Like we'd play Leslie West and we'd play Zeppelin and we'd play all these different stuff. You had to that, play Beatles too. Did yeah, you play? We did. We played Beatles songs right. and we played uh, you know Chicago. You know, because every once in a while we'd have to play a wedding, you know, or something like that. We'd wow. have to play Color My World or something, you know. Ooh. So, <laughs> but but you know, we'd slip in some good hard rock stuff in between it. So it was it was fun and it was a way for us to make money to to get our gear. And and then once we had that, at some point, Leonard and I just said, "Man, we got to start thinking about doing our own material," and that's what that's what basically happened. And and then as soon as we did that, that's when we knew the people that weren't going to be in the band that were in the band uh -huh. for, for that. You uh -huh. know, you know, we had a keyboard player and this this guy that was playing sax and this and that, and they were like. I don't want to do this hard rock stuff, man. And I said, yeah, I can understand that. So let's get somebody in here that we know is into our style of music. And that's when we found Joey and we found Phil. And uh -huh. Phil was, a, was somebody that went to school with Leonard. Uh, and I think, uh, I think they went to, uh, it wasn't grade school, but I think it was uh, maybe high school or, or junior high or something like that. Mm. So, uh, yeah, once we got those guys in, that was in 74. We were still doing some cover stuff and then mixing in some original material. And then finally we just said, no more cover stuff, 100% original. And we just were in the rehearsal studio day and night, constantly coming up with stuff. And, and we promoted our own gigs locally, rented local halls, put out flyers to the, to the local uh, high schools. Right. And, uh, and it was amazing how we had created this vibe in, in a very short period of time. Wow. What was the first uh, song you guys remember, you know, putting together? I'm thinking 25 hours a day, maybe. It was or? Beautiful Dreamer. Oh yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, that was our first real song that we put together. Actually, we came up with one other tune that was our very, very first song that we ever wrote together. But it never got on a record until we released these unreleased, previously unreleased songs, you know. Mm. And uh, and it was called Rock and Roll Horror. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> And That's it was so about us whoring ourselves out, you know, playing cover tunes and, you know, so on and so forth. Oh. You know, it, was, it, <laughs> was, it wasn't about what you were thinking it was about. Yeah. No. Well, no, no, no. But that's, was, a, that's a good turn of phrase. Yeah, exactly. Was that Phil? It was, no, it was, was actually, it was Leonard. <laughs> yeah, because Phil didn't write lyrics back in the early days. When we did the first two Yesterday and a Day records, he probably wrote a few lines here and there, but it was mostly me and, and Leonard. That Leonard was writing a lot of lyrics. And... Um, yeah, and then that changed as, as we got up until uh, right about Black Tiger record. That's when Phil really started coming forward with the lyrics. And out of desperation, we needed somebody, too, because we had a lot of written songs that had cor choruses written, you know, lyrically and everything, right. but we didn't have the verses written yet, and we were in the middle of recording the record, always and a, it wasn't done yet. Always a great position so, to be so in. Just I'm throw in there, money. Yeah, exactly. I'm in there doing the lyrics, and I'm like, Phil, man, I hope you can come up with the lyrics for the next one, because we need to, you know. something that rhymes with itch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where he came up with Barroom Boogie and everything, and I'm like, oh, man. You know, and Phil would get himself into the right mood, you know, and he was easy to get into the right mood. <laughs> uh, you know, a bottle of wine or a couple of couple of jacks and coke and there we go and he, he had the, all the inspiration he needed <laughs> wow, awesome well listen um i uh, really want to thank you for coming down and thanks for all the years of great great well, thanks, music man. and great great it. shows i've really enjoyed every Cheers. second of yt and thank you play the hell out of uh, uh you know if i had to assemble my life just based on when i was exposed to some yt music i bet there's at least a couple of years in there oh yeah Oh, I think so. <laughs> if you had to put it all together. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, all right. Dave, Man Dave Manichetti, Y&T, uh, tonight at the Brixton, tomorrow at the Galaxy, or maybe you're seeing this sometime in the future. They were great shows. I hope you made it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, it's 95.5 KLOS. See you next time. Cheers. Mr.